Jim, I have some bad news for you. Your wife, your, your third wife, Patricia, she sold your corpse to a town in Pennsylvania. Hi, I'm in the lovely town of Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania is a lovely place to come and visit. It's about 60 miles from uh, Philadelphia, maybe 100 miles from New York City. And it's a wonderful place in the Pocono Hills of Pennsylvania to get away from the bustling city and take a little vacation in the countryside. It also has a really interesting history. And one of the most clever and a little macabre uh, ideas for promoting itself, I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Jim Thorpe is a very popular tourist destination, again, from Philadelphia and New York, but it was founded in 1811 as an industrial town called Mok Chunk, which is an Indian uh, phrase from the Delaware Indian tribe. Today, people come here to visit, just kind of relax a little bit. One of the most prosperous endeavors in the town these days is Airbnb, although they're starting to regulate it here as well as they seem to do everywhere these days. An enterprising young fellow named Asa Packer came here from South Central Connecticut in the early 1800s. Coal had been discovered in the region and it was being mined in larger and larger amounts. So Asa, a, a skilled carpenter, traveled here to seek his fortune. Folklore has it that he walked. These days, it's a four-hour drive on an interstate highway. That would be a long walk, and it kind of speaks to Ace's uh, enterprising nature. He did indeed find his fortune and became one of the wealthiest people in the country before he died, hobnobbing with the, type, with the likes of President Abraham Lincoln. Asa arrived in the region. Like all good entrepreneurs, he saw a need, and he filled it. He started using his carpentry skills to help the coal mining companies build wooden dams and barges to start utilizing the Lehigh River to get the coal out of the nearby hills, which is being trucked out by wagon trains, mules and horses, very inefficient. And not only that, this opened up the coal that was being extracted for international sale. Because the Lehigh River goes into the Delaware River, goes into the Chesapeake Bay and on and on. There was, they would, began supplying coal to all the big cities up and down the East Coast of America, which were growing like crazy at the time. Along with the growing coal business and other industrialized enterprises here in this region, beer making and you know, many other manufacturing kinds of enterprises were growing. So were the railroads. Railroads started to proliferate, especially here in this region, and they became much more efficient at hauling coal than Ace's wooden boats. Barges, I guess, is the correct term. Being no dummy, Ace went into the railroad business. Purchased the only property in town that could accommodate a railway station. Still here today. This train just takes tourists up and down the mountain on a sightseeing trip. But tracks are tracks. You know, if you're adaptable, you'll use them for something. If Asa was anything, he was adaptable. This is a Monday afternoon in mid-July, and it's uh, pretty crowded here in uh, Old Jim Thorpe. Plenty of people getting on the train to do a little sightseeing in the Lehigh River Valley, lining up for tickets. It's nice to see. America's emerging out of its crisis. It's a very pleasant sight. By the mid-1800s, Asa Packer had become one of America's top industrialists. But again, his gig was more capitalizing on existing enterprises and shipping their goods elsewhere. He was what you would call today a logistics guy. And by the time the American Civil War had begun and 
production for war arms was taking place here and other industrialized areas of the country as well, Asa became even more wealthy in, in shipping under those conditions as well. What you're looking at now is the Acer Packard house. This is where he lived, and it's now a museum and a very worthwhile place to come and visit if you're ever in the region. I find it interesting. Later on in the 20th century, a young Walt Disney, who was just beginning to grow his empire of entertainment around a talking mouse, visited the Acer Packer Museum. So if it looks familiar and you've ever been to Disneyland or Disney World, Walt Disney modeled the Haunted Mansion on Acer's house. Little anecdote for you there. After the Civil War, with railroads being in place, people from nearby cities, Philadelphia and New York City, to be precise, began to travel here to Machchunk for getaways, places to come in the countryside. The Pocono Mountains are quite beautiful, a little bit of natural landscape for city dwellers to come and visit. And as we moved into the 20th century, the village elders, perhaps taking a cue from their founding father for his adaptability and creativity, decided to go ahead with a marketing scheme to promote the town as a tourist destination. And herein lies the name change to Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. It's quite a story. Jim Thorpe was an American collegiate football player in the early, early 20th century. He was an outstanding athlete by any measure. Jim Thorpe traveled with the U.S. team to the 1912 Olympics in Sweden, where he won two, two gold medals in track and field. Again, he was considered one of the best athletes in the world at the time, and maybe even still today, winning in track and field and the decathlon. Jim went on to be a professional football player, and when he died, his wife sold his corpse to Mock Chunk in one of the oddest promotional ideas that I can think of. Mock Chunk, wanting to promote itself as a tourist destination, acquired the corpse of Jim Thorpe, even though he had never set foot in the town, and named the town after him. And here he lies, in the town of Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. Engraved here on his tomb is a quote from King Gustav of Sweden. Sir, you are the greatest athlete in the world. Jim, I have some bad news for you. Your wife, your, your third wife, Patricia, she sold your corpse to a town in Pennsylvania. And then, you know the Indian tribe that you were part of? You were born an American Indian? Well, they decided they didn't want to leave you resting in peace, so they came and tried to get you exhumed and moved to an Indian burial site, I suppose. Here's the good news. That battle went all the way to the appellate division of the United States courts. And your grandson stood up and said, let the man rest in peace, will ya? So, that's the good part of the story, Jim. Here you will remain. You are a hell of an athlete.